When should Christians worship God? And what should motivate our worship? This is what I'll be discussing in this video. Stay tuned. Hello, this is Williams from Grace Tidings. Welcome back to this study. And if you are new here today, consider subscribing. In my last video, I discussed what is worship and the right way to worship God. Today, I want to focus on why we worship God. I believe the motivation for worship is important. Our worship of God is to be focused on Him. From Christ's own idea of true worship, it must focus on who God is and not the condition or the feelings of the worshiper. Many believers, myself included, often jump into singing and praises and so on and so forth in worshiping God when things are going as planned in their lives. However, the same God suddenly becomes too small to worship when things aren't looking so good. And the reason for this is because we make worship all about us and all about how we feel. We focus our worship on ourselves rather than God. But it ought not to be so. God is worthy of worship because of who he is, the almighty God, and not because of how I feel. So when things are working for me, or when things are not working, he is still worthy of worship. When I live with perfect health, or when I'm terminally ill, he is still worthy of worship. When my finances are in order, or when they're out of my control, he is still worthy of worship. When my marriage is peaceful, or when it's on a rocky ride, he is still worthy of worship. So when my children obey or when they are rebellious, God is still worthy of worship. When I'm surrounded by loved ones or when I'm hated by everyone around me, God is still worthy of worship. And by the way, lest you forget, we are created to worship God. He is worthy of worship because of who he is. So if our worship is not to be determined by our condition, but by who God is, how then can we describe him? The truth is that the more we know about God and his works, the more we realize that it is impossible to fully describe him. I mean, how can you describe an infinite God with a finite mind? In other words, how can you describe the God who is impossible for us to fully comprehend? That is not possible. And this is why in describing him today, I want to focus on two things, among many things that the Bible reveals about God. And these two characteristics are written in the Bible multiple times, especially in the book of Psalms. And here they are. God is good and his mercy endureth forever in first chronicles chapter 16 verse 34 the bible says oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good and for his mercy endureth forever so if we cannot know all that there is to know about god we can talk about what we know today god is good and this is part of his nature. Those who do not understand this will often attack God for allowing bad things to happen to good people. Or they ask questions like, if God exists and is good, why didn't he just create a world without evil, a perfect world? See, so the truth is he did, as we are told in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Everything that God created was good until man sinned and polluted the creation. 
The point here is that the fact that God created a world that is good shows that he himself is good. And speaking of the goodness of God, the fact that you are alive and watching or listening to this message now is a testimony to his goodness. Whether you believe it or not, he created you, loves and cares for you. Despite how you feel about his nature or even his existence, God is good. And that is a good enough reason to worship him and live for him. The Bible also tells us that the mercy of God endureth forever. Not many people seem to get this point. God is merciful and his mercy is inexhaustible. What we deserve from God is his wrath as a result of our rebellion against him. Therefore, anything that is better than his wrath is a blessing for us and we ought to be thankful for it. And this point is clearly stated in the book of Lamentations as follows. It says, It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Just think about what God can do in response to our rebellion against him. He could easily squeeze the whole world between his fingers, and there go you and I. Yet he continues to hold back his wrath while he shows us mercy and love. In 2 Peter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards the world, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So we are saved by his mercy. If you are saved today, God is all the more worthy of worship in your life. Just think of being forgiven a lifetime of sins, past, present, and future, as a result of the mercy of God. We are told in Titus chapter 3, in verse 5, that this is not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Remember also that he promises in his word that not only has he forgiven us, those who have come to him through faith in Christ Jesus, he also will not remember our sins and iniquity anymore. And that's not because God suffers from some memory loss. He he just has chosen not to bring them up against us. We read in Psalm 103 verse 12 that as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. In Romans chapter 8, the Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So worship God. I know that the true believers out there will agree with me that God is worthy of our constant worship, regardless of our current conditions. He's always worthy of our worship. So if you're a Christian today, does your life glorify God? If not, you can yield yourself to Him completely today and worship Him with your life. But if you are not a believer yet, God is still worthy of your worship. And the best way to worship him is by humbly repenting from your sins and accepting the salvation offered to you by Jesus Christ. That is life, eternal life, offered to you free of charge. The Bible says that God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So humble yourself before God, repent from your sins, and trust in Christ for your salvation. This is the first step and the biggest step of worship. The Bible tells us that even angels in heaven, they rejoice every time an unsaved person comes to faith in Christ. What a reason to worship. So in conclusion, our worship of God 
must be focused on God himself and not us. True worship must be driven by who God is and not by how we feel at a point in time. And more importantly, our entire life is to be the worship of God and not just when we feel like singing. We must do all things to the glory of God. Worship God. Live to honor Him. For He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Thank you for watching. Until next time, grace and peace be with you in Jesus' name.